you could see that Stanley Marcus was a visionary. And he had a fantastic eye and uh, a fabulous conversation because it was not only about fashion, it was all mixed. It was about art, literature, it was mixing everything. Hi, we are producers with M3 Films based in Dallas, Texas. And today, we want to tell you about our next documentary film on the one and only Stanley Marcus. Today, we're introducing you to our Kickstarter campaign. So please take a look at our video and imagine all the people that we can add with your help. I remember growing up as a child and when uh, I knew that Stanley Marcus was coming for dinner, I truly thought that the Pope was coming. Stanley had enough self-confidence for three people and he was unafraid and he loved the limelight. Stanley Marcus was a collector of celebrities. Uh, he cleverly figured out that if celebrities came to his store uh, without actually doing so, they had tacitly endorsed Neiman Marcus. Everybody had to get on board when the Fortnite theme was announced, and he, he just saw a way to blend commerce and culture and make it all seem seamless. It made Dallas seem a more worldly, global center. I remember when we were invited at his place because of the Fortnite, and he showed me in his library antique sculptures of fertility ladies or symbols. And I looked down and there was a box in plastic with a pill. And I say, Stanley, what is that? He say, it's the first time that there is a pill against fertility. So Stanley had a courageous aspect to him when it was a matter of principle and particularly a principle of freedom of expression. He was willing to take a stand. Stanley was adamant on the subject of integration. He was quick to champion any cause. He integrated the Zodiac Room. That was number one. Number two was during the time of the assassination of President Kennedy. Stanley stood up and spoke before the Citizens Council. He was very, very statesmanlike. Stanley was one of the first to recognize designer names were going to be important. I mean, it's extraordinary. I mean, before Pucci was Pucci, Stanley Marcus recognized what he had. And he had these extravagant extravaganzas in Dallas uh, for each designer that he was promoting. I copied that. He talked about having the queen bee. There's a queen bee in every society, in every city. You have to get the queen bee to shop with you because that queen bee will attract honeybees and the honeybees will all want to aspire to dress like the queen bee and have that same standard and they in turn will attract others to do the same. The editor from Vogue uh, declared uh, that uh, Neiman Marcus is not a store, it's a state of mind. He was a god. In retail, he was a god. He had a vision that the consumer would change, and he talked about shopping at home, direct to the consumer. Certainly the catalog program that he had started was just the beginning. Today the concept of from-home shopping is totally practical. That lets your customers ask questions about merchandise, buy from you, even pay you. If Stanley Marcus were around today and just starting in business, he would probably have created Google, Amazon, Facebook. We owe our existence today to Neiman Marcus and understand his tenure. What made Neiman Marcus Neiman Marcus? I think this film is so essential for young people today. Uh, and I think you're, I don't know how you're going to distribute this and how they're going to see it, but I would support anything to make that happen. This is like show business. This is fabulous. Your generosity over and above our goal will keep us moving and advance our production schedule as we have committed interviews in Mexico, Los Angeles, Chicago, Washington, D.C., and New York. That's life. That's life. That's what all the people say.